Hey guys, how you all doing? Uh, I've been meaning to do this video for quite some time. Um, but I've been having issues myself with other things, so... This is basically going to show you the PSX emulation on the GCW Zero. Now, there's two emulators currently right now for the GCW. One that's been uh, out for, you know, a couple of weeks, but doesn't actually work at all. And one that is on the forums deep down under called PSX for All. Both are PlayStation emulators. Like I say, only one of them works. And one of them is much easier to type in Google to find the PSX for All than to actually try and find on the GCW forums. No work has actually been done on these. And since my last video on the uh, M64 Plus Alpha, no work really has been done on that either. Um, the only one that has had work done is the Mednafen PSX, but that doesn't actually currently work. There's a lot of slowness with it, uh, people that have got it working. I personally haven't got it working, um, but basically with both emulators, what you're going to need to do is download the BIOS files. Now, you can download these anywhere, just Google them. Um, you can get them all basically... Um, you know, they come in like SCPH1001, 1002, different numbers for different regions. Um, I downloaded every single one, but be warned that unless um, the actual, um, unless the BIOS file, which I'll show you right now, uh, where are we? Something that I figured out whilst playing around last night. Um, Unless the BIOS file is actually, um, right, you see, they came, they came like this, basically. But unless the BIOS file is all lower, lower case, uh, then they won't actually be detected. So you need to change them all to lower case. And obviously I have copied these um, over to the uh, root folder of PSX for all. Uh, I think I've only copied a couple though, um, and then renamed them. Um, where are we? Uh, home. Nope. I think we need to go down to root. No, not root. That's it. Yes, I. Is it in here? Nope. If I can find the folder for you, I'd show you. Uh, let me just let me just quit, then go back into it. Be quicker than flapping around. So basically, yeah, you uh, you have to put these uh, into this folder. And as you see, I have got some in there that are like uppercase. These will not be detected. The only ones that are currently detected are the ones I've changed myself. So the five five zero two and the SCPH-101 and 1001. Those are the only ones that are detected by the emulator. So be warned, when you get the BIOS files, if they are in capital letters or upper and lowercase, you need to change the whole name to lowercase to get it to actually work. Um, and like I say, this emulator, uh, it hasn't actually had any work done to it, but it's really hard to find. But if you find it, you end up with a nice PSX for all, not much of a badge, um, I think it's kind of a default icon, and that's it. So we load it up, and all we get greeted with is this menu. And this menu is very buggy sometimes, you know, when you press A, you go back instead of forward, uh, or B, whichever one it is. Um, and yeah, it can be very, very strange. But show FPS is always on. Now, if we turn that off, we have to do that every time we boot up um, the emulator, which is. A little annoyance, but not really much problem. Sound options leave as is, and then you've got BIOS options, which I've got North American SCPH1001. But as you can see, lowercase there has to be lowercase on um, where it was where I've shown you. Um, otherwise, it will not recognize. And there's various ones, I'm not going to click on it right now, but you can cycle through. You've got Europe, Japan, uh, Germany, I think, and, and a few others um, in there. Uh, but what we're interested in is file options and loading a game. Now we have to go through this menu every single time and here it will load up 
where all the BIOS is, so that's where I should have put my emulators, but mine on the SD card, so I have to go all the way back through the menus, and I have to do this every single time I want to start a new game, so I recommend you definitely put them in that folder if you can, and sometimes it, it backs out, let's try that again, um, it's extremely frustrating, to be honest with you, I think the UI just needs a little bit of work, and actually, it would be perfect, because look, I, uh, let's try again, you know what, screw the, uh, s s I'm going to keep the FPS on, just to make it quicker, but it's just a pain, because sometimes it just doesn't work as intended, sometimes it does, um, you have to be really slow with it, I think I have to go to media, yeah, SD card, PSX ROMs. So I downloaded a few for you, Marco Polo, whoever, I think it was you that requested. I'm not sure if all these are going to work. I've had to convert some of them from ECM files to bin files. But what we'll do is we'll go through. Um, there's a couple I couldn't get hold of, which I did uh, mention in a comment. Um, but we'll just do these. I'll show you these five games. I think there's five there, so you can see kind of how the games play out, or if they play at all. You need to get these converted to bin files. It won't recognize ISOs, it won't recognize ESM, uh, ECM files, so you need to convert these to bin files before you put them on. Uh, and I do recommend that you put the Q as well as the bin on there, but I don't think you need the Q file, but that's what I did anyway. So then we just load up the game, and it'll say, Are you sure you want to select uh, such and such? dot bin symphony of the night so you press start and then it'll load the bios loading bios loaded and then it'll load the game a couple of things i have noticed on crash in particular it has crashed it might crash on this one nope but um you know unless you load it with a bios you don't get that intro right there if you load it without the bios you skip that intro and go straight to the game um and this actually uh, makes Crash Bandicoot, in this case, playable. Um, but this is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And I had it converted. And uh, as you can see, you know, it's pretty responsive. So, triangles, yes. Now, the text can be a little bit... Um, can be a little bit buggy here and there, but uh, same with the uh, same with the music. It's very sort of buggy, but with regards to gameplay, it runs pretty smoothly. Uh, you can see on the FPS count at the top there. Uh, I'm not sure if you can actually, but you may be able to see that. Um, but you know, it runs pretty smoothly. No issues whatsoever with running um, this or crash. So, you might want to play with the sound down, you might want to play with it up, it, it's intermittent, so it's, it's not like a huge problem, I think some games may be worse than others, but it's pretty damn solid, frame rate wise, I don't know, if, I've never played this game, so I'm guessing it's probably a little bit quicker maybe, yeah, so... So some games may run a little bit slowly, I guess, but performance-wise, it's not bad. It's playable. Tribute. You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. Your words are as empty as your I'm pretty short for time on this, so we're just going to skip. But you can see, you can sort of see, like, um what you get with with each game this way if i do it i've got to be pretty quick because i haven't got much memory on my card so um for my camera that is so i've got a limited amount of minutes to show you guys so yeah i think it may run a little slow i'm not entirely positive but i guess we'll find out when i've played when i play a game that i've actually played on ps1 which is driver so we'll we'll boot driver and then we'll press start and we'll see if it'll launch I'll save crash for last so I can show you exactly what I mean um, when you launch it this way because it'll glitch here, it just, just stops here, it hangs and then there's no way of, of getting forward but as you can see you know it's pretty pretty decent 
emulation wise it's not actually that bad I think if it only needs some minor improvements it's pretty you know well compatible with with quite a few different games so if we go to take a ride and we'll take a ride in Miami and we'll go today and we'll see how this plays but it loads pretty quick you know the only other thing as well is it doesn't have analog stick to use currently but you use the d-pad which isn't too much of a problem if you haven't got a spooky one like mine but this runs pretty much full speed So that's driver, you know, so to come out of PSX, you just hold L, R, and the rest. That's driver, um, uh, let's, file options, load a game, uh, and we have to go cycle back through, I really need to change the directory on this. And sometimes it just does this. It's really flaming frustrating. I don't know if that's because I press B or I, mean, I get confused. Um, load a game. This way. This way. This way. Media. SD card. PSX ROMs. Right, so we're going to go for uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, which is one that was requested. And we're going to press start. I'm really short for time, I think I've got like, yeah, I've got a couple minutes left, not many. Sound actually is not bad on this one. So we'll just load it all in. It's pretty quick as far as like emulation goes. It's not bad considering there's been no work on it whatsoever since its release. You know, I think if it had a little bit of work on it, then it would be pretty much perfect um, just some minor issues UI and uh, sound that's maybe a little bit of speed up but doesn't need much and I haven't played Tony Hawk's in years because the games haven't been great recently but you can see right it, it plays pretty much flawlessly um, no issues whatsoever like I say, it may be a little bit on the slow side, but most things seem to play pretty well. Um, let's go load again. So annoying having to do this every single time. Mega Man plays pretty decent as well. Um, the one I'm going to show you after Mega Man, Crash Bandicoot, yeah. So we'll do Mega Man press start so you don't have to launch it with a BIOS you can launch it without a BIOS I think the compatibility may be a little bit better if you launch it with the BIOS but to be honest I haven't really noticed any difference whatsoever especially when it comes to Crash Bandicoot um, it runs fine without a BIOS so and Mega Man seems to be running yeah so this is exactly what Crash Bandicoot does it hangs here so we have to come out, go back into it, reload it up, um, and load it without a BIOS, which isn't ideal for some people, I guess, but the compatibility is still pretty decent, so it still works okay. And we'll, we'll uh, SD card, PSX ROMs, we'll go to Mega Man 4, and then it says, uh, did, are you sure you want, yes, and it'll just, it, it won't load the BIOS, it just loads straight into the game, completely skips the, the initial logos, 
And then we get Mega Man X4. But as you can see, the audio is a bit dodgy. And it's just strange, some of the issues that this thing has. Some of the issues that this emulation um, has. Considering it's had no work, I think just a little bit of work is needed, and PSX emulation would be pretty much perfect. I don't know if this is like full screen or what. Uh, uh, full screen. I don't know if this is um, like full speed emulation because I've never played a Mega Man game. So but that runs okay, as you can see. And uh, yeah, we'll go on to Crash now. File options. Play again. So this is just going to be the video on PSX emulation only, and then we'll do a video on other emulation another time. Um, but I just wanted to show you the PSX stuff. Uh, I wanted to do the video for Marco, who's been asking for quite some time and everyone else who's interested uh, Alright, Crash Bandicoot uh, We don't want to load it with a BIOS, do we? Uh, play a game without BIOS There we go Alright, media SD card uh, PSX ROMs Button cute. Let's start. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, if you want to know more, ask me in the comment section below, and uh, if you want any more, you know, game showing, then keep those comments coming in, and enjoy the rest of this for the next few seconds.